Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Robert. The name of this channel is called Robert Simmons Paying It Forward. What does this remind you of, guys? What childhood show does this remind you of? I'll give you a hint. Will you be mine? Will you be mine? Won't you be my preloader? <laughs> <laughs> Preloaders, VI preloaders, welcome back to the channel. Always nice to have you guys here with me. For those of you that have never been here before, what we do on this channel is focus on slow speed motorcycle operation. As I already stated, my name is Robert. I'm a retired NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle lieutenant. I did a wonderful 22 year career with the NYPD. 15 of those years were spent with the motorcycle unit. On this channel, I share my knowledge, experience, and training that I received from the NYPD Highway Patrol Motorcycle Unit with you guys with a special focus on slow speed motorcycle operation because that's the kind of motorcycle riding that requires 100% of your skill to keep your motorcycle upright 15 miles per hour or less without putting your feet out. And the goal of this channel is to make you be the boss of your motorcycle. I want to help you do that. And what that simply means is I want you to be able to ride your motorcycle at slow speeds with confidence. I want you to make right turns, left turns, and U-turns with confidence without putting your feet out. I want you to get to the point where you realize there's no reason to put your feet out, okay? That's what I want to help you with. It's about raising your confidence levels on this channel. It's about positivity. It's about helping each other out, backing each other up, all right? It's an each one teach one environment. That's what this channel is all about, all right? This is Preloader Nation. I'd like to thank my VI preloaders for becoming VI preloaders and supporting the channel. Highly appreciate that. I'd also like to thank everyone that has contributed to the channel through donations. All right, that's very helpful. It definitely helps out. Um, and all of you guys that's, that send emails and comments in the comment section, uh, my Facebook group, Preload and Keep It Loaded, you guys know I answer every single comment. All right, is it time consuming? Yes but I take the time to do it. Sometimes I don't get a lot of sleep because once I start, I just can't stop, right? So yeah, I appreciate you guys. Um, as much as I appreciate you guys understanding how important this is and being out there practicing on your own, so much so that I'd like to share with you guys a fellow preloader out there practicing. Check this out. Okay, this is Preloader Donald from Richmond, Virginia. I like that, did you see that guys? He started to get on that motorcycle on the low side and he said, oh, hell no. Walked around and got on on the high side. That's me all day. Now, listen to this in the background, guys. I want you to hear this. I don't know if they're talking to Don, but just listen. Again, I don't know if they're talking to Don. Anyway, guys, that's a 2020 Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager that Don is riding. And uh, he said he got his bike uh, December 29th, 2018. The first bike he got was December 29th, 2018. And that was a 1999 Honda Goldwing. He said he didn't ride it much at all due to fear. Uh, if he had to rate himself, he rated himself a two. Now, in this video, what Don said to me is, he's seen me do this so many times, ride my motorcycle between my cars in the driveway, that he said he just had to try it. And after he tried this and did it successfully, he raised his rating from a two to a three. <laughs> so that's great. He says that he's riding more and he practices almost every day. And soon he will be here in Pula, Georgia to practice with me. I look forward to that. Now you can see him pulling up here. See how much he was wiggling? 
all he had to do right there was let the clutch out a little bit. Because remember, open up the clutch if you want to give it some power. And if the rear wheel has power, it wants to stand up and it wants to go straight. So you see Don shook his head. Perseverance. He's going to back up and give it another try. I love the perseverance. Here comes Don. Second attempt. Very good. See? A little more power to that rear wheel. And the motorcycle will go straighter. Good job, Don. <laughs> good job. So with a little nod of the head. I love it when a plan comes together. I love it when somebody accomplishes something. Don, thank you for sharing this with me and your fellow preloaders. Hope to see you soon. I'm never going to get tired of looking at that. I want to thank him again for providing the video for me to share with you guys. And again, if you're a VI preloader and you're out there practicing and you want to share your practice video with me, just send it to me and we'll share it with the rest of the preloader nation. Okay? All right. I also want to remind you guys, you VI preloaders, that this Friday coming up, 7 o'clock, 1900 hours, we're going to be having another live video session, okay? And hopefully all of the kinks have worked out this time. Hopefully you'll get a notification this time. Uh, but just in case, set, it, set an alarm on your calendar or on your phone or whatever, all right, so that you guys can be there and you can take part in this live session. And I enjoyed that a lot. I had a lot of fun. And I know I'm just going to have more fun the more you guys that participate. Okay, so again, that's only going to be for VI preloaders, all right? And this one's not going to be rebroadcast, okay, just so you guys know. So VI preloaders are going to be the only ones that can participate in it, and they're going to be the only ones that can see it, all right? Uh, it's part of being a VI preloader. It's part of being exclusive. There has to be some, uh, you know, exclusivity. Uh, and that is one of them. And I kind of asked my preloaders advice when it came to a certain, you know, certain things. And a lot of them said stuff that made a lot of sense. You know, what I do on this channel, that, the content that I provide to you guys, hours of free content. You're not going to get that anyplace else. So <laughs> if this one part is something that is only exclusive to people that pay $5 a month, I think that's more than fair. All right. It's fair to them and it's definitely fair to me. So as a reminder, guys, if you'd like to become a VI preloader or if you just want more information on it, hit the join button right next to the subscription button or you can go to the description section uh, in this video and there's a link for it. OK, click on that link. And even if you're not thinking about joining right away, at least you can watch the video that tells you a little bit about the perks that you get as a VI preloader. All right. OK, guys. So this video today, I'm going to be talking again about exercise number two and the importance of exercise number two. So the reason I'm starting here in the garage is because, man, it is hot out there. But the only way I'm going to show you guys is to go out there in the heat and talk to you about what I, what I want to talk to you about. So, all right, let's go do that. All right, guys. So the way I park my motorcycles, I park them across this side of the garage. And the third one, which is not here, it's outside, Violet, parks right here. So I used to park my motorcycles facing in and I would back them out of the driveway into my walkway then we had an exercise number four situation where I would just make a right turn and go out but now instead of doing that I ride my motorcycle up the driveway into the walkway and then I back it into the garage okay so Where does exercise number two come into play here? And what I'm going to talk to you guys about is when I first ride up into my driveway, okay, obviously that's exercise number two. Remember, there's no duck walking going on here. And we're going to talk about this curb. All right, guys, so I, like I always say, exercise number two is so important because it's relevant every time you ride your motorcycle. Because in order to go fast, you have to start out going slow, right? And you can't go fast forever. So even when you're going fast, you're going to have to slow down eventually, right? So there's no way of getting around exercise number two. And for those of you that don't know what exercise number two is, I encourage you to watch the practice session videos, right? Because it's in every single practice session video, as it should be, because it's in every aspect of riding your motorcycle, all right? All it is is the slow ride, staying in the friction zone, preloading and keeping it loaded somebody said on the uh, <laughs> uh, I think it was in the uh, it was on the Facebook group preload and keep it loaded they said can somebody explain in ink and and 
plain English what preload means and keeping it loaded. Of course, that annoyed me a little bit because everything I explain is in plain English. I mean, it can't get more plain. And it also tells me that they didn't go to the description section, as I tell people to do in almost every video, because that's where the definition of preload and preload and keep it loaded is. So guys, I want you, it's important that everybody knows that this channel, as fun as it is, and as, I try to keep it light and, and, uh, and airy, and, and uh, I don't want it to be intimidating as much as I poss possibly can do that. Um, yes, there's entertainment aspects of it, but let's not be confused that this is about learning, all right? This is about learning. And if you really want to learn anything in life, you have to put time into it, you have to pay attention, you have to read and read and read, all right? The beauty of this is it's a video, so you can kind of look at stuff. But if I say go to the description section because there's information in there for you, go in there and read it, okay? It's going to help you out, all right? So it takes patience too. All of this takes patience. Like I said, there's a small amount of us that can look at this, go out, bam, do it, and they got it. For others, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some patience. They might have to watch a video two, three times, watch other videos, read, okay? It's important, guys, all right? All right, so you're preloading and you're keeping it loaded. Remember, exercise number one, that's starting and stopping. But when it's time to start, you're going to make sure you're in first gear. You remember, we do that before everything we do. Make sure you're in first gear. You're covering the rear brake. You're going to slowly, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. And as soon as the motorcycle starts to move, you're going to pick your foot up. Okay? Now, you're going to stay in the friction zone to be in exercise number two. And I always tell you, I want you to go as slow as possible. I want you to feel like the motorcycle is going to make you go, uh-oh, I want to put my foot down. And instead of putting your foot down, I just want you to let the clutch out a little bit. Why? just the clutch or how come you're not doing anything with the throttle or the clutch because remember i want you to preload and keep it loaded keeping it loaded means you're going to keep your rpms where they are 1500 1800 2000 whatever as long as it's not too low i don't want it real high either you have to listen to the engine and the more you practice this the more you're going to learn what your engine is supposed to sound like what's uh what level of rpms makes the most sense for your motorcycle, okay? Keep it there. Your clutch, once you start moving, keep it there. And you're gonna use the rear brake to control your speed, all right? And every time you feel, uh-oh, just let your foot off the rear brake. Let your foot off the rear brake. Because it's already preloaded, the clutch stays right where it is, just use the rear brake, right? That's all you have to do. Now, if you wanna, it's always good to use these two things together, clutch and rear brake. But again, if I'm trying to simplify this for you, in the beginning stages of this, just keep this where it is, keep this where it is, worry about the rear brake. Okay, so remember I said to you guys, I don't care if your handlebars are going like this because that's going to happen, all right? As long as you don't put your foot down, you're good, right? Remember I also said that if I'm walking next to you, because in exercise number two, I walk next to the preloaders, and I always say if I'm walking next to you and you're, just, you're able to keep your handlebars just straight, I always say you're going too fast, right? Okay, now take all of that into consideration and listen to what I'm about to tell you now. When it comes to a situation like this, when I'm coming home and I ride between my two cars to go up my driveway, now, yes, I'm in exercise number two, the slow ride. But we're gonna talk about this curb first. So when I first hit the curb, as soon as I feel my front tire hit it, I let the clutch out a little bit. I'm already preloaded, right? I let off the rear brake a little bit as well. That's going to get me over that. Then the back wheel, same thing. I keep it open. As soon as the back wheel hits, I squeeze the clutch in a little bit. I'm still in the friction zone. I'm on the rear brake. Now I'm tackling this part. So the part that I told you that I don't care if your handlebars are going like this. No, clearly I don't want to do that between my cars. So what am I going to do to make sure I'm not doing this in between my two cars? I'm pausing on purpose. I want you to answer the question. <laughs> I'm, opening up, I'm opening up the clutch more, right? Because now I want to incorporate some speed. Because what's going to happen if I give the rear wheel power? Again, I'm pausing because I want an answer. I want you to say it out loud before I say it. 
And if you said it out loud before I said it, and you said what I said, put it in the description section. I want to see which one of my preloaders are on the ball. What's going to happen if I give power to the rear wheel? The motorcycle is going to want to stand up. The motorcycle is going to want to go straight. And isn't that what I want if I'm riding between my cars up this driveway? Yes. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm flying between the two cars. Because remember, even though I'm saying I'm giving it power, I'm giving it enough speed so that I can go straight. I'm always still on that rear brake. Remember, your rear brake is for what? Your front brake is for stopping. Your rear brake is for... Once again, if you know the answer and you said it in your head before I say it, put it in the description section, all right? Your rear brake is for control. It's always going to help you control the motorcycle. So when I give it that burst of speed so I can go straight, that rear brake is always going to help me out. Now, I'm not jamming it because I don't want to go so slow that now I'm going to turn into one of the cars. Remember, we don't do anything herky-jerky. Everything is controlled, and that rear brake helps you stay in control. All right. Now, this is not a competition. Like I always say, if this is something you're not comfortable doing, then hell no, don't do it. Move your car out of the driveway or duck walk your motorcycle up the driveway. Remember, I don't encourage people to duck walk, but I do encourage you to do what makes sense for you in your skill level. OK, I want you to be comfortable. Is it worth it to risk scratching one of your cars or your motorcycle to prove a point to yourself? No. Now, you might have some people outside in your driveway and say, hey, I'm going to do this because that's happened. Uh, one of the preloaders sent me a video of something they've never done before, but because they had some people in the driveway, they tried it and they made it. And let me address this as well. This is a little off subject, but there was a preloader that uh, made a U-turn out in the real world. Never did it before, but got into a situation and said, I refuse to duck walk this motorcycle. And not only did they do it successfully, but man, he felt so good. Like after he, he, he wished that there was a crowd there to cheer him on. And I said it to him, and I'm going to say it to you guys. If you conquer something in regards to these motorcycles, if you do something you've never done before, if you overcome a fear, you deserve those accolades. You deserve to be applauded. And if I was there, I would definitely be, I'd be clapping out loud for you. Woo! Because that's huge. And that's step one. That's how we get over hurdles. That's how we get over hurdles. So big ups to him. And big ups to all of you preloaders out there that are trying things. I don't care how small or insignificant you think that accomplishment might be, it's not small if it's something you've never done before, if it's something you've been apprehensive about or fearing and you did it, ah, oh, that's awesome. Okay, so, all right, let me get back to this. So what I do is when I'm leaving the house, I usually have two, four cars in the driveway. I put one on the street and I leave one right here. So that gives me enough room to get the motorcycle out of the garage uh, and come straight out here. But when I'm coming home, more importantly, I get the ride up and just do what I, to do what I told you I did earlier. So I'm just going to show you guys what I do, and I'm going to walk you through it too as I ride up, how, what I do with my clutch and my throttle, everything I told you I do, but I want you to see it. So before I get on the bike, guys, one more thing I want to uh, bring to your attention. It's not about exercise number two. If you're riding your motorcycle and you come across a bridge and it's got those, you know, the ridges zzz, as you're riding on it, a lot of times people feel a motorcycle, whoa, whoa, what do I do? Head and eyes, look straight ahead, just keep going straight, okay? That's all you got to worry about. All right. Okay, so as I'm approaching, as soon as I get to this curb, preload a little bit more. Back one, and then straight. A little bit of speed, but rear brake. So you can see, I pulled up very slow. Now, some people go, I want to pull up a little faster. Listen, the faster you hit that, the more it's going to make your motorcycle go like this. And when the motorcycle goes like this, people go, uh-oh, what do we do when, they, when you feel, uh-oh, what do you do? This is another one of those moments. If you said in your mind what I'm about to say, put it in the comment section. When you feel, uh-oh, open up the clutch a little bit, right? Or if you're fully loaded and the clutch is already open, it's the rear brake, okay? Point is, give power to that rear wheel. It's going to be fine. It's going to correct itself. So even if you do hit a little fast, which you don't want to do anyway, it's not necessary. As soon as that front wheel gets up, give it enough power. The point is you want to keep moving forward. The back wheel hits, give it power. You're good, right? All right, guys. So, you know, the point is now when I was in motorcycle school, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, uh, the barricades that the police use. They're made out of wood. 
There's two feet, and then there's one part going across. The one part that goes across, I don't know, maybe it's about uh, 12 inches thick. In wheel school, or motorcycle school, for you guys, we used to have to ride on top of that, from one end of it to the other, straight. Now, again, once you get the front wheel on it, keep the motorcycle true by giving power to the rear wheel. Rear wheel gets on it, just give it power. Remember, power wants to stand up, wants to go straight. The biggest thing is people worry so much about, uh-oh, uh-oh. So again, I don't know if you guys noticed that when I came up here, as I'm riding up my driveway, I'm looking straight ahead. Because the rules don't change. Don't look down, don't look at your cars. Look where you want to go. I want to go straight ahead, and I go straight ahead. All right? All right, guys, this was just going to be a short one for you. Um, I was in my house one day, and I was thinking about something I do all the time. And a lot of the times, I do stuff all the time, and I do it because it's second nature. But I go, hey, you know what? I'm using exercise number two there. My driveway's on an incline. I'm riding between two cars. A lot of different things going on there. In my mind, nothing's going on there because if my motorcycle can fit through it, I'm just going to ride through it, right? But it's definitely something I wanted to share with you guys, all right? So with that being said, I hope it helped you out, guys, all right? If you got something out of this video, if you like my channel, if you love it, please subscribe, like, share. If you'd like to support the channel even further and have extra perks and become a VI preloader, click on the join button, click on the link in the description section, okay? It's also going to be at the top of the screen if you're on a, a computer or a, uh, a device other than a, than a smart television. I'll say that much. All right, guys. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Thank God I got some shade so I'm not burning up while I'm talking to you. <laughs> As I always say, spend more time being thankful for the things that you have and less time complaining about the things that you don't. I want to give a special shout out to my brothers and sisters in blue. Please be careful out there. Know that you're appreciated. Special shout out to the NYPD Highway Patrol Motorcycle Unit, particularly Highway 1, because that's where I used to work. And the highway district, because that's where the motorcycle school is. That's who taught me how to ride these motorcycles the way I do. But it doesn't end there, guys. I need you to continually practice. This is a perishable skill, okay? Practice, 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 practice. Preload and keep it loaded. Practice, practice, practice. Because practice breeds confidence, guys. And a confident rider is not only a safer rider, but a rider that's going to enjoy riding the motorcycle that much more. Riding a motorcycle is a lot of fun going fast. I want it to be as fun for you guys riding slow. Until next time, guys. All right, preloaders. Something I wanted to share with you. I'm excited about it. So I don't know if you guys tra uh, follow Traveling Tall. He's another YouTuber. Anyway, he's organizing a group ride. It's going to be July 17th. Um, it's going to be, we're going to be meeting at Bootleggers Holly Davidson. That's in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, and we're just going to go for a ride. That's going to be and there's going to be other content creators there as well. Cycle Fanatics is going to be there. Barber CVO 19 is going to be there. Um, I'm going to be there. Of course, Traveling Tall is going to be there. He's hosting it. And he, he's invited a bunch of other YouTubers. I don't know exactly who's coming. But the people I just uh, mentioned to you are people that I've spoken to and told me that they're definitely going to be there. They're going to be there. Their viewers and subscribers are invited. Of course, you guys are invited. Now... I wish I had, I, what would be awesome is if you guys did come to that, if all of you guys wore my merchandise. Because, what do I always say, guys? There's two kinds of riders, regular riders and preloaders. And I, to be able to identify preloaders just by pointing them out in the crowd because of their merchandise, that would be awesome. Now, I might be able to point them out just by watching how they ride, but it's not even about that, guys. It's about actually getting to meet some of you guys and go for a ride with you guys someplace other than the cone course and someplace unfamiliar to me too. So that's going to be great. So again, guys, I, I, everything is not concrete yet. Um, that date is pretty much concrete, July 17th. Uh, hopefully the weather cooperates that day. And the time is probably going to be about 10 hundred hours. So we can kind of mingle a bit and maybe we'll, we'll do kickstands up at 11 or something like that. Um, but I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I don't know who's going to be coming. They don't know who's going to be coming. We're just going to actually find out that day. Now, here's something else I want to run by you guys. So what I'm thinking is, that's a Saturday, by the way. I'm thinking if I hang out in Knoxville, Tennessee on Sunday, maybe I'll do a practice session out there somewhere. I don't know where because I don't know anything about it. So if any of you guys that are in Tennessee near that area, if you know of a place 
where we can do a practice session and it has to be a good amount of space, all right? Even if it's not, even if it's not really big, I don't have to do all nine exercises. I can do one through whatever, whatever makes sense. But if you're interested in something like that while I'm in that area, shoot me an email, let me know, okay? Because if I get enough people that say they're interested in it, maybe I'll hang on a little longer and do a little something something with my preloaders, all right? Or my VI preloaders too, all right? That'll be, you know, that'll be something that I'm gonna make available to VI preloaders and preloaders because I'm already gonna be there. All right, guys? All right, so again, let me know. If not, if, the, if we're not gonna do that part, but we're just gonna ride, that'll be great too. I am gonna be recording some of it, not all of it. So for those of you that can't make it, you'll still be able to see a little bit of what went on. All right, guys, hope to see you there.